Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have part two of our ranked, this is not a top 10 Sheepra episode. Now, uh, yesterday I did the leather Sheepras, which are some of my favorites of all time. And um, today we're going to do what I'm just kind of bunching together as the fruity or green or floral. Now, keep in mind, this is all subjective. Okay, so my number one doesn't beat your number one. You know, number one here doesn't mean it's a technically better perfume than number 10. Uh, first of all, these are some of the best Sheepras the world over in, in my collection that I have access to. Most of them are full bottles, but some of them are discovery atomizers or samples or, you know, some of the samples, actually both of the samples I'm going to show you uh, that are decants, I want full bottles of. Um, even the ones that are official brand samples, uh, one I've already reviewed on the channel and one I will be reviewing very soon, I want full bottles of. So this is my favorite category. Sheepra is one of my favorite categories. So it's very hard for me to uh, rank this because it's very subjective. And uh, many of the old school Sheepras of the past that use the traditional uh, bergamot top, you know, labdanum and oak moss in the base, or the triangle, if you will, has a hesperitic top with, you know, usually some sort of a floral heart and some sort of a woody, mossy base. That's the, that's the construction of a traditional classic Sheepra, if you will. And so, um, you know, these are fragrances that I wear proudly. I, you know, whether they're marketed towards women or men, I don't care about that. I wear these fragrances with pride, and every time I wear one of these Sheepras, whether it's the leather Sheepras we talked about yesterday, whether it's one of these with the fruity, floral aspects, uh, some of them are extremely green, uh, some of these are challenging. There can be animalic Sheepras. There's a couple that are very close to the top that have some animalic facets to it, and I love animalic notes and fragrances. You guys know that. Uh, and so, you know, this video is... Uh, hopefully a reference Sheepra video. I want people to that are interested in what Sheepras are and want to take the next step to be able to pull up part one and part two now uh, and learn about this, learn about the beauty of Sheepras. And if you like fragrances that are complex and if you like fragrances that transition and change a lot, this is really uh, a fragrance category for you to dive into. And there's so much to learn about. There's so many amazing Sheepras from the past to hunt for. You know, I mean, it really gives you lots of uh, lots of time and and lots of lots of things to to do and lots to smell. That's the other thing is when you're smelling a Sheepra, there's so much that changes. You know, from the top to the mid to the heart to the uh, base, uh, the dry down, if you will, the old school ones with the real oak moss have so much texture. There's just a lot to smell. There's a lot going on. They're never boring to me, ever. And that's what makes them so special. And that's why I'm so passionate about Sheepers. Uh, it, it traditionally is considered a uh, older school. You know, uh, people will say things like, oh, it smells like a grandma Sheepra or this, that, or whatever. I never thought that. From the second I understood what a Sheepra was. I never thought that these smelled dated or like grandma. I thought they were some of the most amazing things I've ever smelled. I was instantly taken to them. Uh, and so let's talk about some of these. But first, as is customary on Channel Ramsey, let's do scent of the day. And today's scent of the day is the first time I'm wearing this in full. And it is very very good. Uh, it is expensive though, but I was lucky enough where I did not have to pay for this bottle. It was sent to me by a friend. Actually, two friends sent me bottles within a week of each other. And uh, the uh, second friend actually already put it in the mail before I could say, hey man, I just got this, you know. Uh, so uh, I was very, very lucky because now I have two. I mean, this one doesn't have very much juice left. The other one's a little bit bigger, and I love this fragrance already, so I'm happy to have a little bit of a backup. But this is called um, Anna Zwarinkina, is the perfumer. That's her name right there, Anna Zwarinkina. And that's her little logo, in her, and uh, this is called Queer de Russie. And she is a... One of these indie perfumers who uses like very natural ingredients, her stuff smells very similar to smelling like a 
you know, if you like stuff like Arise Le Doré, if you like Bortnikov, if you like Ensar Oud, uh, if you like Meleg, her fragrances kind of fit right into that. They fit right into that kind of smell. And when you first spray, I'll do a full review on, on this because this is full review worthy and I need to make sure I do a good job on this one. I always try to do my best, but this is a special fragrance to, to really try to get right. Um, and I want to support these kind of houses, you know, granted her fragrances are expensive, so she is making money on it. It's not like she's, uh, it's not like she's struggling or anything, but, uh, she, uh, created this fragrance that when you first spray, it almost smells like you took a whole musk pod of a deer, an animalic musk pod and buried it and then took a hit of cannabis and blew it on the ground where you, uh, where you buried the musk pod. It is an absolute insane, smoky musky, tarry, uh, resinous, but then there's these beautiful bits that kind of poke through, you know, almost like a flower fighting its way to get through the soil. You know, there is green galbanum, there's may rose and jasmine, there's uh, orange blossom, and so you get these little bits and pieces that, you know, fight for space above these heavier notes, real ambergris, South Pacific sandalwood, and, of course, my favorite note is real castorium. And, my God, I mean, what a wear this has been today. Uh, for a first wear, and this is very good. And I'll tell you what, this has been actually so good that it makes me want to dive more into the house. So, uh, Queer de Russie by Anna Zwarinkina. Okay, so that was my scent of the day. So, this is going to be a top 35 video, in case I didn't say that. Yesterday's video, I think, was a top 15 leather fragrances, if I wasn't mistaken. Uh, and today's going to be a top 35. I have more of these in my collection, although I did leave out a leather fragrance. So there's two honorary mentions. This one can go in the leather fragrance category. So I'll tease you guys that haven't had a chance to see the leather uh, fragrance video with this. This is a spicy, leathery sheep from the house of Antonio Puig. And it was actually done by Rosendu, Rosendu Matu. Rest in peace. Uh, he has his final fragrance for the House of Zoologists that he created coming out. Now, I think it's out. It's called Cardinal. Uh, but Rosen du Matou was a legend in the fragrance community. He's a Spanish perfumer, I believe. And then the one of the um, big-time legends as far as number of perfumes made, and that's Alberto Morias. But uh, this is old Alberto Morias style. If you've only smelled new Alberto Morias... There's no way you'll believe this is an Alberto Morias. You you won't believe it even if I tell you. But this is uh, from the house of Antonio Puig, and this is called Sybaris. And so this is a discontinued uh, spicy Sheepra that was created in 1988. Uh, and this opens up with beautiful, absolutely stunning perfection uh, as far as a um, you know execution of cumin in the top. The cumin in the top in this makes it so spicy and a little bit challenging. And, and I've heard some people say, I don't really know about this one yet. It's a little bit much. And I felt exactly the same way. But as you continue to get some air into the bottle and as you continue to wear it, the fragrance opens up more and more and more. And you get beautiful, dark, deep sandalwood and cinnamon and leathery and leathery base with oak moss and patchouli. And it really does have that 80s masculine smell that I love so much. I love those 80s masculines, and this fits right in. So, often overlooked, but um, something to definitely look into if you're a fan of vintages, especially vintage discontinued fragrances. Sybaris by the House of Puig is the honorable mention for the leather fragrance video from yesterday. Today's honorable mention, basically it just missed the top 35 because I struggle with this. I've said I struggle with it before. Um, there are other aldehydic floral sheepers I like better than this. I just, uh, even from the, from the same house, there's some that I think are better. This is one that maybe if I got a different bottle, I don't know, but um, I have both the EDT and the Eau de Cologne, and I, I struggle with both. So this is why it's an honorable mention. You guys might think I'm crazy for putting it here, but I have to be honest. I mean, if I could wear some of these other ones over this, I, I would every time because I struggle with this. It's not an easy wear for me. Uh, but this is a floral, earthy, aldehydic fragrance created in 1921 by Chanel. And this is called number five. Now, my bottle has been beat to shit, as you can see. Um, but the juice is still good. 
and it is um it has that big classic elang 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 uh did i say elang 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 uh chanel elang elang uh custardy creamy a little bit rubbery um with that sparkly aldehydic top that everyone knows from number five. And then you get that classic floral heart of Irish Jasmine, Lily of the Valley, and Rose with Violet Roof. Now, root. now this one has an extra couple notes. It has the civet amped up. Uh, and I think it has vetiver. And I don't think there's vetiver in number five, like Eau de Toilette or Eau de Parfum. Uh, so it has vetiver and it has civet and, of course, the oak moss. And that makes it much more masculine to me. This is the more masculine version of number five. So that's why I pick it. That's why I picked it to show it. But uh, it is discontinued. They don't do number five Eau de Cologne anymore. But uh, it is a floral, earthy sheeper, and it's my honorable mention today. Okay, so let's get started on the list. Number 35 is a Palomo Picasso, and it came out in 1984. Uh, it's a spicy floral sheeper with a honeyed uh, woody dry down with some oak moss, of course, in the base. And it's called Palomo Picasso. Uh, Palomo Picasso. I think that's what it's called from 1984. And this one is a tester bottle that I actually found from 2007. And I'm wondering if, if I go back even further, if I would have found a bottle from the 80s or 90s, if I would have liked it even more. Because while this is good, um... I just, I, I'm curious to, to see. So it says Luxury Products LLC. Isn't that L'Oreal? Uh, this is a, um, if this is a L'Oreal reformulation, it really makes me wonder what the original was like. I bet it was amazing. Um, but there is this ambery, honeyed, like honeyed woods in the base is what it feels like to me with spicy coriander and angelica root in the top and this beautiful floral heart. Very floral though. Uh, and I was expecting the civet to come through even more, the animalic notes to come through even more, and they don't. They kind of sit in the background on my skin. Uh, and um, so that's the reason why it's here. I do like my uh, Sheepers to be challenging, and I like the animalics, as you will see once we get to the higher ranked list. Uh, so these these that are closer to the back are not going to be as animalic and challenging. Okay, number um, 34 is a, another Chanel, and this time it's the, ma the first masculine ever released from the house, all the way back from 1955. It used to be called Chanel for men, and then it was like Chanel, a gentleman's cologne, and then a poor monsieur. So it is now poor monsieur, and this is the EDT, the eau de toilette. If you want the one that is a true sheeper, you have to get the EDT. Uh, the EDP is kind of a different fragrance. They've added vanilla and a pop and axe, and they kind of change some things. It's not a true sheeper. This is, and this is um, very. Uh, citrusy in the top, and the citrus is really last. You get a lot of lemon, a lot of neroli, uh, uh, almost like this. I always imagine these like brittle petit grand twigs that can just be, you know, broken, you know, and inside is just this very uh, orangey, uh, you know, orange citrusy like smell. And there's cardamom, there's coriander, there's basil and ginger, oak moss, vetiver, and cedarwood. And it is a classic sheepra. But it's probably my least favorite type of Sheepra. These classic citrus-heavy masculine Sheepras I am not a fan of. I did recently buy, and I didn't include it in the list, but if you go watch my early impression on Gatsby, uh, which was by a house called Pacoma, not Paloma, not Paloma Picasso, uh, but Pacoma was the house, <clears throat> and the fragrance was called Gatsby. And I did an unboxing, and in that unboxing was a leather case with an aftershave, a soap, and an EDT of Monsieur L'Envant. And I think that's a much more interesting take on this DNA. The Civet in Monsieur L'Envant is stunning. Both bottles are still sealed, and so I'm hoping the juice is still good. I haven't had a chance to test it yet. I'm going to decant it and test it tonight. But uh, if that is a Chypre... Uh, I would much rather wear that over something like Chanel's Pour Monsieur. That's just my opinion. Everyone has a different taste. But 
for me, I, I need the animalics. I need something that kind of keeps me interested. Chanel Paul Monsieur is a little too boring for me. And some people say, well, it's classy though. You know, that's what real, this is what old money smells like. It's classy. It doesn't shout, it doesn't shout for attention. And that's true, but I would like to smell myself for more than 45 minutes, uh, which this literally lasts an hour on my skin. I'm not exaggerating. An hour, I'd have to reapply. Uh, it's that, you know, maybe the first five minutes are great, but I just need a little bit more. Okay, number 33. Um, so, number 33 we have a fragrance called, it's a ball, it's a Balmain fragrance. And this is called Ivory de Balmain. And this is for women, marketed for women. Uh, this is a extremely complex fragrance, discontinued now. And this is thanks to Anuj at Enchante. I think he might have more stuff like this floating around if you're interested. But uh, this is a floral chipra, but to say it's a floral chipra is like, you know, uh, it's the understatement of a century. This is everything. This is like the everything chipra is how I think about this. Because look at this note listing. Aldehydes, Artemisia, uh, Bergamot, Chamomile, Mandarin Orange, Tagets, Violet, and Lemon. Okay. Uh, speaking of Tagets, there was a Chipra that I did an early impression on. I probably won't be able to find the uh, juice this quickly. Maybe I will. Let's see. But it was from the house. Um, it was from a house. I probably won't be able to find it that quickly. But, um, yeah, I won't be able to find it. It's, um, long story short is it's from a house that Mr. Oz did, and it was called Sh Murmur Shepra, okay? And uh, Murmur Shepra used a Tagets note in the top. It's one of the only other Shepras I've smelled that uses this Tagets note in the top. It's very distinctive. It has almost like this brittle, dry, hay-like quality, and it... Um, it apparently is um, a bug repellent. Mosquitoes do not like the smell of tagets and other types of bugs too. And so it's a uh, marigold is another name for tagets, I believe. I think it's the same plant. But if you grow them in, they're like perennial flowers. If you grow them in your backyard, when you sit outside in the backyard, mosquitoes won't get around it. They don't like the smell of it. Interestingly enough, little tip. But it's a distinctive smell, and it's here, just like it's in Murmur Sheeper. Murmur Sheeper could have been on the list, but I forgot to add it. Uh, and then you go to the heart. That was just the top. So you go to the heart. Carnation, orris root, jasmine, lily of the valley, nutmeg, narcissus, neroli, pepper, Turkish rose, ylang ylang, and cinnamon. That was the mid. Now we go to the base. Amber, oak moss, raspberry, musk, patchouli, sandalwood, tonka, vanilla, vetiver, and frankincense. What a note listing. Uh, it came out in 1980, and it is um, extremely complex, extremely unique for a floral chipra. Uh, and the House of Balmain, um, they have a masculine that I have been on the hunt for for years. And I, I mean, I found a mini, enough for me to do a video on, but I want a full bottle. It's called... Uh, What's it called? It's called, uh, man, I'm getting old. Uh, what is that? What is that masculine called? Let me see. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. Ebony de Balmain. Ebony de Balmain is a stunner. I would rather have a full bottle of Ebony de Balmain than Ivory de Balmain, but, uh, yes, it's, um, and the bottle design, of course, is Pierre Denaud again. Jonathan's been giving him, him a shout out, and he deserves it. What a bottle designer he is. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. I love the little, almost like uh, almost like a town square, right dead smack in the middle of the bottle where everyone hangs out. Beautiful bottle. So that's Ivory de Balmain. If you're into interesting sheep rows, that's one to get your nose on. Okay, um, so this came out in 2019, and next on the list is number 32. This is a Francesca Bianchi. And it's called Etruscan Water. So Etruscan Water is a, 
fragrance that I purchased because it was compared to um, Azure by Persolase, and I don't think it's anything like Azure, but I'm not holding that against Persolase. I, uh, I bought it. I'm the one that pulled the trigger on it. But it does have the labdanum, the oak moss, the uh, bergamot. It also has this green, mandarin, orange, and petit gran uh, with caraway and basil. It's a little green. It's a little spicy. But it has this um, dry immortel bit to it. So you have the dry immortel with ambergris, musk, labdanum, and that patented Francesca Bianchi orris root that she uses in everything. I'll do a full review one day, but I've got time on this one. I have some other Francesca Bianchis that were sent to me that are more time sensitive. Uh, so I will be doing reviews on those first, probably because I only have a couple mils. Uh, okay, next on the list, we've got number 31. And this is one of the old school Balenciaga. Balenciaga made some fantastic Sheepras back in the day. And this is called Chilanga. And Chilanga is a spicy Sheepra, but it's also fruity. And it came out in 1973, and it really does feel like the 1970s for some reason. You know, it has this popular, there was a lot of uh, green notes that became popular in the 1970s. Think number 19, uh, which is on this list, of course. Uh, but think number 19. Uh, and this has this green touch to it. I'm not sure what it is. It does feel like, um, it does feel a little bit like galbanum. Uh, but galbanum isn't listed, so I'm not sure exactly what it is. But there is this green touch with, uh, fruity black currant, okay? So green, galbanum, black currant. It's extremely attractive. It's very beautiful. Uh, and it, and it kind of dries into this spicy floral, the spices uh, is clove, and the floral is iris, jasmine, lily of the valley, rose, ylang, oak moss, patchouli, sandalwood, vetiver, and cedarwood. And so uh, you can see it's got the, and you can tell this has real oak moss in it. Um, the real oak moss in the base, and the patchouli adds even more heft. So one trick that perfumers will do sometimes is they'll use patchouli in the base. Uh, and the patchouli in the base, you know, in modern times is used to almost kind of like supplement oak moss because they can't use very much oak moss and patchouli has this heaviness to it. You know, like you throw a fragrance in the water without patchouli and it floats with it, it sinks, you know, it's heavy. And this has both in the base. This has the real oak moss and the patchouli and the woods are beautiful. Balenciaga made some amazing fragrances back in the day. Um, so I'm glad to have this. I'm glad to be able to you know, talk about it, have it. It's just a little 30 mil, but it's enough for me. Uh, it's, an, it's enough for me to discuss. Okay, next on the list is number 30. And this is one I actually just talked about on the channel a couple weeks ago or a week, week or two ago. Uh, and it's a zoologist, and this is a big old school Sheepra, and it's called Civet. And Civet, if you're expecting it to smell like Koros or just synthetic Civet, you will be disappointed because... This is a beautiful Sheepra, um, you know, by Shelly Waddington. She's the perfumer. Go watch my review if you're interested in learning more about it. But uh, there's kind of the bottle and the note listing. Zoologist is a cool brand. Victor Wong did something amazing. And shout out to him. Uh, and I think he went from like five fragrances initially to now 30. Uh, and I've got some more I'm going to talk about on the channel very soon. I still have to give full wearings to T-Rex and um, Sacred Scarab, and Camel, and B. And so I did give a full wearing to Hyrax already, and it was okay. I liked it. I didn't love it, though, but it was okay. Uh, Civet was very good. I like it a lot. It was bergamot, black pepper, orange spices, and tarragon. It has that tarragon in the opening. Tarragon is a um, such a special note to me for some reason. Every time I smell a fragrance that has tarragon, even if I don't know it's in there, I just like it. Uh, and then when I find out there's tarragon in there, for some reason, very strange. Uh, never have I heard any fragrance reviewer on YouTube or anything talk about tarragon as a love, but it's just something I noticed over the years. Tarragon is a, is a big hit for me, always. So tarragon, uh, carnation, frangipani, heliotrope, tuberose, and ylang, -ylang. So the twist here is the frangipani, and the frangipani almost gives it this tropical-like vibe, uh, strangely tropical in the mid, even though it's like a take on an old-school civet. 
or Shepra. Uh, and the base is civet, coffee, intense, incense, leather, labdanum, oak moss, vanilla, and vetiver. Very interesting fragrance. Very good. Full bottle worthy for sure. I don't think I'll buy a bottle because there's probably other fragrances that I want more than this, but it is very good. Uh, so it comes in at number 30. Number 29. And this is the one that kind of, I went back and forth between Civet uh, and this, which one would be a little bit higher. But in the end, I ended up picking this one probably because the ingredients are a little bit better, but the price tag is way, way higher. You know, Civet is like $170 for a bottle or something. This is $2,000 a bottle retail. Now you can find these discounted at discounters for, you know, 900 or whatever it is, but still it's ridiculous. No fragrance is worth that. Uh, and this is uh, from the house of Roja Dove and it is called Shepra Extraordinaire. So Shepra is literally in the name. Roja loves his Shepras. Uh, I probably could have done an entire video on Shepras. He did, but I just picked a couple. Um, uh, Sheepra Extraordinaire and Civet are actually very close. They really are. They are very similar. Um, this is uh, a little bit more decadent on the fruits, if that makes sense. There's also aldehydes in the top. So if you like aldehydes, you'd probably lean a little bit more towards this. There's also a slight touch of like cumin here. There's no cumin in Civet. Um, so there's slight differences here and there uh, but one of the biggest differences to my nose and the reason I actually ended up putting this above um, above civet is because this has a beautiful iris that lovely iris that Roja uses from time to time it is here and that is beautiful I wish the civet was amped up there is a slight leather note in both of these but it's not so pronounced that I decided to put these in the leather category. The one at the very top of this list, which if you know my taste, you know exactly what it's going to be. That could have been in the leather list, but I decided to put it here uh, because Azure des uh, uh, de deserved to be number one on the leather list. Okay, next uh, on the list, we've got number 29, number 28. Sorry, Sheep Extraordinary was number 29. Number 28 is a fragrance that I actually want a full bottle of. It's a, a sample that was very kindly sent to me by Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, this is from the house of Jean-Louis Scherer, and this is Scherer 2. And Scherer 2 is, um, they assume that this was created by Francois Caron, okay, uh, who was a little bit shy with putting her name out there. She she, she, uh, one of the downfalls that she had is she never wanted to attribute anything to herself. She wanted to give everyone else credit, which is a great, you know, thing to do if you're working with a team of people and you're a leader. It, uh, it makes them really respect you, you know. And, but when now we're going back and talking about these creations, she doesn't get the, uh, credit many a times when she should. Uh, and Francois Caron is Pierre Bourdon's first wife. They work together. And uh, this is a floral spicy sheep. It's got Portuguese mandarin, rose, jasmine, angelica, tuberose, violet leaf, cinnamon, bourbon vetiver, mysore sandalwood, myrrh, cedar, civet, castorium, benzoin, patchouli, apopanax, musk, and oak moss. And the person that turned me on to this was actually Russian Adam. During one of our live streams, the first one, I believe, the very first one we did, we started talking about vintage fragrances and god damn it stay here and i asked him what he was buying and he was like he pulled this one out and he's like man i got this for like 20 bucks and it's amazing and i was like really and then um and then rachel sent me a sample and, and it is amazing the castorium and the civet in the base is stunning it's a fantastic use of it the resins do shine through too the myrrh and the apopanax shine through uh, it's beautiful. Beautiful of Shepra. Big fan. Shepra too. Okay, so that comes in at number 28. Number 27 is going to be an EDT-EDP duo. You could get either one. They both smell very, very similar to me. Extremely similar. Uh, and they're from the house of Jean Patou. 
And at number 27, we have 1,000. So 1,000 is supposedly, at the time, the most expensive fragrance ever created, okay? And if you take a look at the notes on the back, you'll see some high-end notes. So you've got um, Osmanthus from China, Bulgarian Rose, Absolute of Jasmine from Grass, uh, Rose de Mai, Real Mysore Sandalwood, Indonesian Patchouli. And these are floral sheepers, the EDP and the EDT, okay? And they are both absolutely amazing. I, you know, for me, it doesn't matter. And again, these are marketed towards women. This came out in 1972. I would proudly wear in any of these, okay? These are beautiful. Uh, you walk around smelling like this, you will uh, smell better than every single person you run into contact with that day. And these are very interesting fragrances. They change, they keep you interested. Um, Osmanthus in the top is a flower I have come to really love. It's one of my favorite flowers right now. So this has Osmanthus, Bergamot, and Violet Leaf. And what's interesting is nowadays you always get Osmanthus mixed with like saffron or you get Osmanthus mixed with oud or tobacco. This is like such a clean, uh, traditional Osmanthus fragrance. It's so unique. And the ingredients are out of this world good. Uh, it may not be the most complex fragrance in the world, uh, but Jean Carlio is one of the greatest perfumers to have ever lived. So, I mean, what an honor it is to get to wear these. Uh, rose, Jasmine, Geranium, Lily of the Valley, and the Heart. There is a violet leaf note in the top. So it does open up a little bit um, ozonic, a little bit. It has that, you know, uh, not gasoline like um, Fahrenheit, but a little bit of that ozonic vibe, if you will. With bergamot, of course, it's a Shepra and a base of patchouli, sandalwood, and oak moss. And again, patchouli and oak moss combination, very common to see in these sheepers. Patchouli really adds that, that heft, um, which I love. And these are beautiful. These are stunning. These are something that are, it's discontinued now, so you can't get these anymore. Uh, and so I, I really feel honored to have them. And I think Anuj found these for me. So uh, very, very kind of him. This one's a tester, like I should. Actually, they're both testers. This one just has the notes on it. This one doesn't. The Eau de Parfum doesn't. But um, yes, good stuff. I, uh, I plan on wearing those very soon. And then we've got um, number 26 on the list. And number 26 on the list is uh, another Anuj special. Actually, Anuj found this for me maybe 18 months ago. I can't remember, but it's a vintage. And man, I am so glad to have this because I hear the new version sucks. That's what someone told me. Uh, I think it was Andy actually told me that from Berkeley. He said the new version sucks. And in one of the comments, he's like, it's one of my favorite fragrances of all time. I love that you show it. Uh, and it deserves to be shown. It, and, and again, just because it's marketed towards women, this is created by Dominique Ropion in 1984. Master perfumer Dominique Ropion, who people will pay $2,000 to buy the night. Uh, this is worth, you know, $100 in the vintage market. 100%. Maybe double, triple that. Uh, this is Givenchy's Satis. Satis de Givenchy. And this is what the vintage look like. You can see the short ingredient list right there. Um, just an amazing creation. Uh, and the way that I describe this fragrance is, imagine you're at a um, boutique. Imagine you're at a at a uh, a feast, okay? Like a kingly feast. Like you've been invited to a royal wedding and out on the lawn are all of the ingredients, okay? So you have aldehydes, bergamot, Brazilian rosewood, galbanum, coconut, and it is coconut. There is this fruity bit to this fragrance. Mandarin orange, neroli, orange blossom, and citrus. And I think what makes this fragrance for me, that's the top, by the way. Huge note listing. I think what makes this fragrance for me is the fact that there's this honeyed aspect. I love honey in fragrances. I love it. Absolutely love it. Probably because my old man always wore Paco Rabanne, which had that honeyed aspect in the dry down. But this is honey with Florentine iris. So the same iris that uh, Dior Homme 
the old bottles of Dior Homme used to use high-end Florentine Iris. So did Bois d'Argent for, for Dior. And Jasmine, Narcissus, Egyptian Rose, Tuberose, and Ylang Ylang. That's the floral heart, but it's a honey floral. And a base of amber, oak moss, clove, moss, patchouli, sandalwood, vanilla, vetiver, precious woods, which I don't know what that is, bay rum, which I can't say I really have ever gotten a boozy accord, but maybe just a touch of bay rum to further that, you know, feast um, image. And the kicker, the combination of civet and castorium in the base. And you can see how important animalics are. All of my favorites have this animalic. God. And this, you will be noticed. I mean, this is like walking around uh, like the guy in Coming to America with the lion's head on your shoulder, you know. Uh, like, imagine walking into a barber shop with that lion's head over your shoulder. Uh, and, the, and the guy in the barber shop reaches out and says, What is that? Velvet? Uh, it's, it's that. I mean, it's, you are going to stand out. People are going to notice you if you wear this. And it's beautiful, though. Uh, they may not be able to place it because they probably never smelled anything like that on somebody. Uh, or if they have, very rarely. But uh, it, is a, it is an absolute banger. More people deserve to, uh, you know, that, that deserves to get more love. Let's put it that way. All right, so that was Isaitis de Givenchy at number 20. Six, number 25 is uh, Balenciaga again. And this one I was really smitten with from the very first time I smelled it. Uh, it is a beautiful floral sheep. Came out in 1947. 1947 this came out. Uh, and it is discontinued, unfortunately. Balenciaga discontinues all their best stuff. They discontinued Cristobal Porom. They discontinued Balenciaga Porom. I mean, all of the good Balenciagas are gone. Uh, and this is also gone, and this is one of the good ones. This is, um, La Dis. This is the Eau de Toilette. Anuj sent this to me. It was a tester he had. Look at the presentation. Okay, beautiful bottle. Look at the top. I love the Balenciaga bees all over the top. That is stunning. I think that looks amazing. And the scent is, my God, I just, I... The reason that number five is out of this list is because of this. I would wear this over number five 10 times out of 10. There is just something with the way that the aldehydes play with the fruity peach and the citruses, the spicy coriander, the floral heart, which this, okay, so the way that I would describe this to someone who's never smelled it is imagine you took number five and you took Mitsuko, okay? which were both already out by the time this came out, and you just combine them in the best way possible uh, with maybe a little bit of ambery warmth. So maybe a little bit of benzoin, a little bit of amber, right? And and you get Ladis. Uh, with the best quality materials, of course. Oh, fudge packer, man. It's good. It's really, really good. Uh, what a floral sheeper this is. So, Ladis, uh, from 1947. Again, uh, these may be a little hard to track down. You can't just go to the store and buy them. But as a fragrance connoisseur, you want to smell the stuff they used to put in fragrances back in the day. You want to smell the difference. You want to smell why so many people like me go crazy for vintage. Check stuff like this out. Ugh, amazing. Okay, next on the list we have number 24. And it's an Estee Lauder. It's an 80s fragrance, again, for women. Uh, it's an 80s fragrance for women. And this one's called Knowing. Look at the bottle. Beautiful. Look at it. Almost like a piece of art. I love this bottle. Amazing. Uh, I don't know how to really date these other than I think if you see, like, more writing on here, it's newer. Um, but Knowing is, and this is a splash, it's... it's uh, I think it might still be available, actually. I think Estee Lauder might still be making it. I don't think it's discontinued. But it opens up with one of the most beautiful boozy plums, okay? So you get this boozy floral, narcotic floral, extremely narcotic. Um, almost like you're smelling the tuberose plum combination of Poison. Remember, Poison from Dior came out three years before this, and it was a huge hit, okay? 
So when Ellie Roger made this, um, that was probably on their mind. And uh, a heart of jasmine, orange blossom, and patchouli with a base of amber, oak moss, sandalwood, and vetiver. And you know what? Vetiver, historically to me, uh, has been a masculine type of note. Whenever I see vetiver in a fragrance like this, I know it's probably unisex. I know it's not, you know, one of those super girly, uh, feminine targeted, heavy fre feminine fragrances. Uh, it's not that. This is easily wearable by a man, easily wearable by a woman. It is, um, it is, it really is beautiful. I, I, uh, I'm shocked more people don't talk about it. There is a parfum version too, which I've never smelled. But uh, this is the Eau de... What, it, what are you? This is the Eau de Parfum. And man, this is strong. I mean, uh, the I don't know if you need a parfum, to be honest with you, with these old fragrances. God. Oh, I need to wear that soon. It's so good. I love I love these Sheepras. They just, they just do it for me. They just do. Uh, number 24 was knowing. Number 23 is a new discovery. And this is a newer bottle. Uh, this is not a vintage, but I don't care. I love this stuff. This is amazing. I can't imagine what a vintage, if if you can even find uh, a vintage uh, as far as vintages go. This came out in 1992, again, by the house of Jean Patou, and again, by one of the greatest perfumers of all time, Jean Carlio. Uh, I'll do a ranked Jean Carlio video one day soon, uh, but this is called Sublime. This is the Eau de Toilette. And this is the last um, marketed run when designer, SA Designer Parfums Limited. So Designer Parfums is the final house to market this before they discontinued it. My God, what a Sheepra fragrance this is. Somebody left me a comment and said, this is their favorite Sheepra of all time. And I don't think I could argue with that if, uh, if you know, um, if you came to me and said that, I would highly respect you. I would think you know your stuff. You know, you are, you have very fine tastes and you're a connoisseur of scent if you say this is your favorite Sheepra. It's extremely complex, extremely high quality. And God, the, the greenness, the spiciness, the citruses, the floral, there's this old school spicy carnation in here, which is gorgeous. Um, the floral heart is decadent and rich. And it smells extremely elegant and high class. It smells like you're about to go to a ball. You know, like you're about to go to an amazing party. Like you're just celebrating life. And uh, the base is amber, oak moss, musk, sandalwood, styrax, tonka, vanilla, vetiver, cedarwood, and civet. You can see there's some heft in the base of this. And maybe that's why I like it so much. But God, it is very, very good. Uh, Sublime is a banger. And not to be overlooked, that anything from the house of Jean Carlio or anything from the house of Jean Patou that Jean Carlio created from the old days should not be overlooked. The guy was a master at his craft and he loved fine French perfumery. He didn't fuck around with any of this new age stuff. And in fact, whenever they forced him to try to create a new age fragrance, this is what he gave him. He gave them Voyager, which smells like uh, Calone for about five minutes, and then it dries down to this uh, woody, um, it dries down to this woody Mysore sandalwood. There's real Mysore sandalwood in this, and you can find this for 40 bucks, you know. Um, uh, and it dries down to this real Mysore sandalwood, uh, and just this classic French-style fragrance. Um, it's beautiful. You know, but you have to put up the first five or ten minutes, which is aquatic. He goes, okay, guys, you're going to make me make an aquatic? Fine, I'll make it my way. It was like a big F you. Uh, it was like his big goodbye, you know. And I, I appreciate, I, I can appreciate that in a man, absolutely. Uh, it's not something he wanted to do, and they forced his hand. And I guess he kind of gave them what they wanted. He gave them an aquatic, uh, but uh, I respect Jean Carlio greatly. So number 22 is um, a newer discovery for me, but I think it's amazing, and I think it could even be higher on the list. I just can't put it there yet because I haven't worn it enough. My God, what a sheeper this is, and this is one that I think inspired other fragrances later on that no one really talks about this one because uh, I think it's just discontinued and hard to find. Uh, I think they did release a new version 
that's called the same thing, but I think it's gutted. It's nowhere near as good as the old version. Uh, but this is a 100 mil bottle, tester bottle that uh, Anuj found me. And it says right here, Green Sheepra, Lily of the Valley, Jasmine and Oak Moss. Uh, that's it. That's all it says. Lily of the Valley, Jasmine and Oak Moss. But uh, it's a lot more. There's a beautiful galbanum note in the top uh, with this aldehydic peach. But it's the castorium and the it, and ambergris. It smells like real ambergris in the base with oak moss and myrrh. And what a perfume this is. Uh, I was floored by how beautiful this is. What a stunningly perfect execution of a Sheepra. You know, very few Sheepras can you just hold up as a, you know, almost like a reference. You could say Givenchy 3 is a reference Sheepra. Uh, and, you know, I'm really lucky to have this older bottle because uh, I hear the new ones are kind of shite. Okay, so that takes care of number 22. Number 21 is Erosia, and it is the discontinued Eau de Parfum version of Erosia. And uh, this is basically uh, what I would call a fruity floral sheep. I don't know what I would call this, but it is a fruity floral sheepra. Um, but there's a lot going on. There's lavender in the top, and... Um, citruses and herbs okay so you get a little bit of thyme and you'll get lavender and then what you get after that it dries down to this one of the most amazing uh fruity sheepras i think i've ever smelled i love this stuff it's fantastic in the in the high heat in the very high heat this is the reason i don't own terre hermes eau de toilette i do own the parfum but this is the reason i don't own the eau de toilette i probably should because it's such a classic fragrance. But you get this, I mean, I've smelt all kinds of fruits in this. Coconut, blackcurrant, apple, strawberry, uh, peach, plum. I mean, I've smelled it all. You smell everything when you smell this. Not all of that is listed, but I've smelled it all. Uh, with champaca flower, lily, orange blossom, jasmine from grass, and then in the base you get grass, mate tea, galbanum, pink pepper, an aniseed, patchouli, oak moss, cedarwood, juniper, vanilla, tonka, amber, iris, birch, leather, ambergris, musk. But um, they discontinued oligarch eau de toilette, or sorry, eau de parfum, and now it is oligarch parfum is the only one you can buy, and whereas 50 mils of this cost me like $260, 50 mils of the new uh, parfum is 500 USD or whatever, 375 pounds or whatever it is. I think it converts to like 500 bucks. But man, brutal price increase. Um, and so, yes, I mean, there's just no need. There's just no need. You know, this is a great fragrance. You didn't need an extra version and double the price, but whatever. I get it. Uh, it is very luxurious. It's a beautiful Sheepra. It's uh, very high class. If if some of these old school Sheepras I'm showing kind of put you off and you want something more modern, let's say, you could go with uh, one of these that I showed. You know, Etruscan Water or Oligarch. Or even Sheepra uh, Extraordinaire by Roja might be a good one to go for if you want something more modern. But they're all different. That's the thing is, is Sheepras are um, a very flexible category. You know, they're a category that can be malleable and mend and bend based on what you mix it with. And um, I'm going to show you one more decant that was sent to me that I am in awe of, that I want a full bottle of. I want a full bottle of this so bad. It's, it's one of the best Sheepras I've ever smelled. It came out in 1964. And it's from the house of Yves Saint Laurent. It's their very first release in 1964. And it's called Why. So why they chose to put out a fragrance called Why, you know, and market it for men in, in, in the last decade or so. And then they put out all these crazy names like Why Live, Why Live. Uh, I have no clue what they were doing there. But this, this on the other hand, holy moly, good God almighty. This is, well, first of all, it might be the best honeysuckle 
uh, opening I've ever smelled. I don't think I've ever smelled a honeysuckle fragrance or note as beautiful as in here. The honeysuckle in this is jaw-droppingly beautiful. Aldehydes, gardenia, there's this uh, green touch again, probably bits and pieces of galbanum or, you know, uh, maybe even tarragon, I don't know. Peach, plum, hyacinth, orris root, jasmine, rose, tuberose, and ylang ylang with amber, benzoin, oak moss, patchouli, sandalwood, styrax, vetiver, and civet. Perfect mixture of animalics and floral and fruity. Uh, and, the fl and that honeysuckle note in the top is like a secret weapon. This thing is so beautiful. I mean, just you can just sit back in awe of how amazing this fragrance is. And, um, oh man, I just got some on my, right under my nose. I'm going to smell it all day now. Um, but yes, why from 1964, what a scent. Discontinued, of course, discontinued. But uh, that takes care of number 20. So we're into the top 20. Number 19 is a fragrance I have, an early impression video coming very soon. And it's from one of my favorite niche houses, Papillon. And this is called Dryad. What can I say about Dryad? What a complex scent. I will do a full review on this soon, so I won't talk much about it now, but all I can tell you is that it's a green uh, Shepra that has everything thrown at it. I mean, star anise, apricots, bitter orange, tarragon, the daffodils, uh, which is Narcissus. I did an entire video on that. You can check that out. There's different types of daffodils in here. Uh, there's jonquil, which is a type of Narcissus. Uh, oak moss, Turkish rose, iris, costus, castorium, elaine, orange blossom, civet, galbanum, lavender, clary sage, uh, liatris, spicata absolute, vetiver, tobacco, woodland, styrax, ionone, peru balsam, benzoin, and labdanum. Extremely complex, extremely deep, um, very dark green and uh, beautiful sheepra. I mean, for a modern sheepra, and we usually give these houses a hard time because it's all, oh, they can't use the oak moss like they used to in 1970 or, you know, that kind of stuff. This proves that modern cheapers can be done. It absolutely can be. Dryad is amazing. Probably deserves to be higher on the list, but once I do a full review, uh, you'll be able to learn a little bit more about Dryad. So uh, get ready for that. That's coming very soon. You can see the notes right there. Beautiful. Uh, so that was number 19. Number 18 is, um, I really struggled with uh, which one was going to go, number 17 or number 18. It ended up being this one, but this one was almost 17. It almost beat out maybe the greatest green fragrance of all time because I love wearing this so much, and that's what this list is about. But in the end, um, you know, it ended up being number 18, and it's an Aramis fragrance, and this is a vintage bottle. And it's Aramis Devon. And the old bottles kind of look like, this is what one of the styles of old bottles look like. But, God, what a fragrance this is, man. Oh, probably one of the, oh, God. What, I mean, there's this is a big statement, but probably one of the best green masculine scents I think I have in my collection. Um, the connect, the uh, connection between the mugwort and the galbanum and the way that Bernard Schant uses aldehydes is just mind-blowing. I don't know why no other perfumer could ever grasp what aldehydes do to a perfume the way Bernard Schant did. He changed the entire complexion of his fragrance with aldehydes. And um, there is lavender, there's carnation, jasmine, caraway, stone pine needles, cinnamon, amber, oak moss, labdanum, leather, musk, patchouli, and, ce and cedar wood. I didn't put it with the leather fragrances because even though it does dry down to a leathery aspect, and the next one has a little bit of leather too, this is more about the green galvanum mugwort. If you're a fan of green fragrances, and you know, the other one that's on my list to buy is Alliage, which was done by Francis Camille. Uh, in 1972, and that is, you know, one of the reference green Sheepras uh, by Estee Lauder. This came out a couple years later, but uh, Bernard Chant uh, in 1977 released what I consider to be one of the best green Sheepras of all time, and it's so good. 
I enjoy wearing this in the spring or summer, believe it or not, even though it is resinous and it has cinnamon, and it's heavier and stuff like that. There's something about this green aldehydic, like when it's springtime and the flowers are blooming, there is nothing better. Uh, Devin is amazing. Okay, next, uh, we do have the aforementioned queen of green, uh, and that's number 17, number 19. So number 17 is number 19 by Chanel. Uh, Eau de Toilette. I prefer the Eau de Toilette because uh, it is not as floral. It doesn't have as much of an act. It doesn't have as much of a accent or emphasis on the florals. And look at this. Look how clean and perfect this presentation is. You know, it just says, uh, yes, we sort of care about the presentation, but what we really care about is the juice inside. That's what this screams. You're not spending money on the, you know, diamond encrusted caps and all that stuff. This is, uh, oh, I mean, number 19 is the perfect green fragrance. I couldn't put Devin over it, even though I almost did. I almost put Devin over number 19 because I really do love wearing Devin. There is something very special about number 19. Uh, and this is a vintage bottle with the short ingredient list. Uh, I think Anuj found this for me too. Let's see. Yeah, and look, back in the day, it used to come with... Um, used to come with this. How cool is that? Ah, the good old days. What can you say, right? Let's see if I can fold you and put you back. Go back to your home. Go back to your home. We'll, we'll call on you when needed. Another, you know, you talk about green scents, and um, I do have a early impression that's going to be coming very soon on a... Um, on a fragrance by Frederick Mall, which is a, a really uh, interesting take on a green fragrance called, uh, it is called, uh, where did it go? Here it is. Synthetic Jungle. And as much as I like this, I just, you know, I just mentioned two. As much as I like this, this is, um, it feels sharper in some way, you know, like you're in the, like you're in this, almost like you cut open like a plant you've never seen before and you, and never grows on earth and it spewed out this alien, you know, green, this, uh, the inside of it was, you know, completely different from any green plant you've smelled on earth. That's what synthetic jungle kind of reminds me of. But I mean, I just mentioned two of the greatest green fragrances of all time. When I have these, when you have these in your collection, why go spend hundreds on synthetic jungle? You know, I can appreciate this. I'm glad that someone was kind enough to send this to me, uh, because now I can talk about it and do a quick hit video. But uh, man, I mean, I would just, I would just wear these and, and you would smell better actually. Uh, so that was uh, number 17, which was number 19, Eau de Toilette. Number 16 is a Bortnikoff. And this is a sheeper not many people talk about, but I love this, okay? And again, these are my favorites to wear. And so uh, I had to put this here, even though it beat out number 19, which is one of the greatest sheepers of all time. And this is not considered one of the greatest sheepers of all time. I still love wearing it. And it really does deserve to be here. Uh, it is a special fragrance. It has real Siberian deer musk in the base uh, and birch tar. And this came out in 2020 and it's called Sheepra de Nord. So I just stuck a fingerprint right there on the front of the, of the cap of the bottle. There we go. Sheepra de Nord. So Sheepra du Nord is uh, a spicy Sheepra that has, you know, the Siberian, the real Siberian deer musk does something special to the scent, okay? It changes it. It makes it different from 
any of these other Sheepras. These do not have real musk, okay? They just, they don't. Um, well, maybe one of them does coming up soon, but maybe this Ariz Ladore I'm going to talk about soon does, but most of them do not have real musk. Even a hundred years ago, they were using synthetic musks. Uh, and so this adds this, you know, look at the detail Ortnikov puts into this. Um, this just adds this, you know, something extra. Look how deep and dark, almost brown with a slight green tint. Uh, and it just, it adds this, you know, real musk is very hard to describe. It really, uh, adds this, this feeling that you just don't get from the, from the normal, uh, synthetic musks. And then of course the oak moss in the base, the spicy nutmeg and the peach. It's beautiful. I love this. Uh, now the musk will remind you of the musk that's used in musk Khabib. So I have both. But, um, you know, the Sheepra doesn't get any talk. Everyone talks about Muscabib. No one talks about Sheepra Denord. So it deserves to get some talk. And then, number 15, we've got a Paco Rabanne. And I actually have the Eau de Parfum, but it's set, set aside. They smell almost identical, uh, but one's an Eau de Parfum, one's an Eau de Toilette. So you can get either, whichever one you can get. This is a discontinued Paco Rabanne fragrance. And I think I might even have the box. Let's see. Yes, I do. Here. So this is Paco Rabanne's La Nuit. So apparently that means the night. And this is the moon right here. Uh, and this is a vintage that I got probably from Anouj. Uh, I couldn't remember exactly where I got this one. But um, I was trying to see if I could show you the note listing. Yeah, there's tape all over it, so you, you won't be able to see it. Uh, but long story short is La Nuit uh, is a stunner. It's a stunner of a fragrance. It came out in 1985, and I will tell you this. Uh, if you like the way that uh, Chanel's Coco feels. Now, Coco leans a little bit more Oriental. This leans a little bit more Chipra. But imagine if you had two fragrances from the same family and one went a little more oriental and one went a little bit more Shepra. This is it. I mean, this is, this is it. Um, this is, God, I love this stuff. Um, Artemisia, bergamot, and, cor and cardamom with myrtle, tangerine, and lemon in the top. Jasmine, pepper, peach, and rose in the heart. Oak moss, leather, patchouli, cedarwood, and civet in the, in the base. And it's so perfectly dosed. The civet is so perfectly dosed. I love the Eau de Parfum. I love the Eau de Toilette. Um, maybe one day I'll do a comparison video, but there's probably no need. I mean, just get whatever you can get. Get it. Honestly, it is um, it is such a great fragrance, and I'm very lucky to have two bottles of this. I don't I don't ever want to be without it. I mean, it's it's one of my favorite Sheepras. So that was number 15. Number 14 is a newer, I'm starting to understand this fragrance more and more. This fragrance could be number one. This could be the greatest sheeper of all time. Um, fuck. And it's Edmund Runitska, who is the greatest perfumer of all time by most people's standards. He's like the modern godfather of fragrances. And I'm not sure when this came out, but I think it was in the 50s, probably. I, I'm not 100% sure. But this is a vintage bottle. It's a refill bottle that Anuj found me. Uh, his name is popping up a lot here, but uh, it's a old school back when they still used Christian Dior, and this is called Miss Dior Esprit de Parfum. Now, this fragrance has been through many different iterations, so be very careful. What you want is you want to get the oldest bottle you can get that is kept well. So this had never been sprayed, uh, and I said, you know what? I don't care about a fancy bottle. I'm going for the juice inside. So screw it. Give me the refill. And I'm glad I did because my fucking God. Um, floral, Shepra, done to perfection. Bergamot with galbanum, gardenia. Now, the sage may actually be a little bit challenging to some. Uh, this, the execution of sage here feels... Um, That, that herbal sage feels really dosed heavily. It feels like Edmund Rudnitska really dosed the sage heavily, 
with carnation, jasmine, narcissus, neroli, and rose, with a base of oak moss, labdanum, patchouli, and sandalwood. And there's something in here. If I close my eyes, I can smell tobacco. There's this resinous, tobacco-like feel, okay? Um, and so, uh, forget the fact that it says Miss Dior. You can just, you can just say Dior. I mean, it is, uh, it is such a great representation of a Chypre fragrance. I mean, it really is. It is just, I mean, more men, um, more men should try this is what I'll say. Okay. Uh, it, it, lots of women probably know it and love it, but more men, more fragrance connoisseurs deserve to know the, the genius of Miss Dior. And again, the new stuff is going to be different. Okay. So, uh, if you get a new bottle, you might be a little surprised. It's not going to be exactly the same. Try to find an older one. All right, so that takes care of number 14. Number 13 is Erosia, and this is much higher than, uh, much higher than the Chypre Extraordinaire for a reason. I think this is a much better fragrance, and actually, this is one of the few Erosias that if I found, found a bottle at a decent price, a couple hundred bucks, I'd be all over it. Uh, this is called... Roja Dubs, Fortnum and Mason, the perfume. It's abbreviated in Parfumo as FM, the perfume. Uh, and FM, the perfume, is Roja doing what he does best. He loves Sheepra fragrances, and he, most of the fragrances he creates are Sheepras. And so at number uh, 13, FM, the perfume, comes in because... This is a beautiful, overlooked, this is extremely overlooked, probably because of the fact that, um, probably because of the fact that it's called FM, Fortnum and Mason, the perfume. It's not, it doesn't have its own name, like, uh, you know, it doesn't have its own name, like, uh, Oligarch or, you know, Danger or something like that. People just kind of bunch this in there with, um, there's a couple other, you know, Herod's exclusive brands or whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, and so I think this gets overlooked because of the name, but the fragrance and the smell. So first of all, right when you first spray, even before you let it dry down, you're going to know you're smelling something amazing because it opens up with the classic bergamot that you expect in a Chypra with lemon, but the twist is citron fruit. And citron fruit is a fruit that is heavily underused. More brands should open with citron fruit because it's different and unique. And you'll smell citron fruit in stuff like Imitation Man by M. Waj. There's a beautiful citron. Some people say this is a Chypra. I didn't put it here because I wasn't sure. Um, but you'll smell citron fruit in a couple niche houses now. They're starting to use it more. Um... The floral heart here is uh, mixed with cystus immediately. So you get this heart of cystus, labdanum, and peach, okay? So like traditional peach from Mitsuko, but it doesn't smell anything like Mitsuko. Uh, and it, it dries down to this. What makes this Shepra so unique is, yes, it has the castorium, so it's a little bit animalic. Yes, it has the oak moss. Yes, it has the woods. Yes, it has the labdanum, but it also has some twists. It has saffron, okay, vetiver, vanilla, benzoin, amiris, which uh, we talked about amiris a couple videos ago, but it's a genus of plants from the citrus family, and some amiris species actually exude elemi resins, and elemi is a resin that kind of has this frankincense like lemony vibe, okay? So you get this amiris wood. Uh, plant in the base with vanilla and birch and there's smoky birch and smoky frankincense and beautiful musk so all of it ties together to create a shepra that gives homage to the past but does something different is the way i would explain it and this is full bottle worthy 100 percent um it's just i won't pay roja prices unless i get a good deal uh, I mean, that's basically how I bought my PDLN3 is a friend reached out and said, Hey man, I'm selling it and I'm not going to rake you over the coals. I'm not going to, 
you know, charge you eBay prices. I'll give you a very fair price. You want it. I'm going to give you first dibs. And I was like, yep. So if that happens with something like uh, FM The Perfume or, you know, something like Green Valley or something I've been looking for forever, yep, I'll grab it. Otherwise, no, I don't need it. I don't need to chase things anymore. You know, I'm just letting them come to me. Okay, uh, number 12. Uh, number 12 is probably one of the, if you are a fragrance historian, you would probably say this is one of the most important fragrances ever created. It's up there with the Chanel uh, fragrances of the past, but very few people talk about this anymore. This is a vintage X-ray. Look at this. This is a vintage X-ray. Uh, and this is Ar Arpege by Lanvin. And Arpege Extra. Look at this bottle. First of all, look at this uh, beautiful setting where it can just sit in and be stable. Right? I love this. And look at this. Stunning. Gold. This was sealed when I got it. This, this Extra. And it is beyond words. I mean, this probably could easily be number one. Probably. Oh, it's so deep. It's so rich. Honestly, even after smelling that Roja, how amazing it is, this puts that Roja to, sh to shame, okay? And you you guys know I'm a Roja fan in some respects, but this, this fragrance just puts it to shame. It is that good. Uh, and it's a shame it's discontinued. This is a vintage bottle. I don't know when... Or where all I know is that the seller obviously did not know what they had because uh, they let this go for nothing I mean that's the kind of deals I'm looking for nowadays uh, because perfume is so expensive look at this beautiful right as a fragrance lover is that beautiful or what look at that they like stamp the batch code on there how old school is that uh, I wonder if it's stamped on the bottle too I won't be able to see it. The lighting's not very good in here. I do need to get some spotlights or something. But uh, long story short is uh, L'Envent Extra is a, a joy and a pleasure to get to know. And it's something that all Sheepra lovers uh, should, should know. I mean, it opens up with aldehydic, old school. Uh, speaking of honeysuckle, speaking of honeysuckle, and I know I said that um, that uh, there is a uh, an, an amazing honeysuckle note in um, which one was it? I was talking about honeysuckle. Uh, why? Why eau de toilette? This one from nineteen sixty four. I think I said yeah, nineteen sixty four. Okay. Arpege is where that started. Uh, Arpege is the one that first used that honeysuckle, aldehyde, peach that, I, that I'm aware of. Um, and beautiful floral heart, geranium, iris, jasmine, camellia, coriander, lily, lily of the valley, rose, ylang-ylang with ambergris, benzoin, musk, patchouli, sandalwood, vanilla, and vetiver. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. Uh, flowery, powdery, uh, sh you know, sheep perfection. So Lanvin deserves the love. And then you guys are going to be a little shocked by this, but this is a sheeper. And you know what? I love wearing it. And I love these older bottles. I'll never buy a new one because I think they're shite. And if that offends you, oh well. But uh, this is a 2015 batch of Aventus. And this is a Shepra. Uh, and that's what made it so great. This is uh, 15Y01 for you batch code whores out there. 15Y01. And, you know, what made this fragrance is that it was a Sheepra, number one, and it was a fruity Sheepra. There were apple and black currant with bergamot in the top and, and lemon and pink pepper. There was rose in the heart. The new uh, note listings don't list rose, but there was Bulgarian rose in the, in the old note listings that aren't there anymore uh, with pineapple, jasmine, Indonesian patchouli, uh, birch, ambergris, cedarwood, oak moss, and musk. And it was that 
Uh, it was the oak moss and the patchouli, I think, that added this heft, you know, with the smoky birch. So, of course, you got the fruity pineapple, and, of course, there was also a special kind of musk used in this. So, when you combine it all together, you get something amazing. And this is this is one of my favorite, and you can see I've got about half a bottle of this 2015 uh, left. These are going for, like, five grand on on ebay it's insane um so yeah i mean if someone offered me five grand for half a bottle sure i'd sell it to them otherwise i'm gonna keep it and wear it uh and then there's a new sheeper i want to highlight at number 10 that deserves love it deserves love absolutely and i had a chance to communicate with adam today he's doing well he just got back from his dubai trip uh and uh this is in arige la Doré. This is the seventh collection, I think, the History of Atar collection in spray format. Uh, beautiful leather pouch, whether it's real or not, who cares? Uh, lovely presentation. And uh, this is called Al Majmua. And this fragrance, I'm going to review. I'm going to do a, a video on Al Majmua. I'm going to do a video on all these if I can. But man, Al Majmua is um, probably... One of my favorites from this collection because, and very few people talk about Al Majmua, but it's this fruity uh, green Shepra, all right? So it's bergamot and it's black currant, it's vetiver, patchouli, uh, catum tree, pandanus, cedarwood, oak moss, and iris. And um, so it says modern Shepra version of one of the most famous and challenging Indian atars. Al Majmua captures the essence of a green, fresh herbal aura and uses several iconic Indian ingredients, such as Ruhas vetiver, Kuda, pandanus flower, sandalwood, and patchouli. Beautiful. Um, this is one of the best modern sheepras I've ever smelled. I will, I will just say that right now. One of the best modern sheepras I've ever smelled. Absolutely, 100% uh, full bottle worthy. So, yes, I mean, um, very blessed to get to sniff these. It was very kind of Adam to send these to me. And then, uh, now that we're in the top 10, we've got number 9, which is a Papillon, full bottle Papillon. This is the one I'm I'm pretty sure I would... Con well, the reason I, I put it here, and I was going to leave it out because I wasn't 100% sure, but there is actually a tag that says Pound Shepra next to it. So I'm guessing they consider this a Shepra. Someone smarter than me probably considers it a Shepra. Um, and so I'm including it in the list, but it is a 2015 release from the House of Papillon, and this is Salome. And this actually made the number one Hyrax fragrance on my list. I love Salome. Oh, it's so amazing. It is um, so sexually charged. There's so much sexual tension with this fragrance. It's um, It really is like sex on the skin. It's jasmine with Hyrax, Hyracium, Turkish Rose, Carnation, Oak Moss, Thyrax, Bitter Orange, Patchouli, Bergamot, and Orange Blossom. And um, huge fan of Salome. I used to say it was my favorite uh, Papillon, uh, but now I'm thinking Anubis, which was second, kind of leapfrogged Salome, but it's a constant war. I love them both so much. Okay, uh, next on the list, we have number eight. And number eight is going to be, I have a backup bottle of this. I love it so much, but it is by a house that was named Rogue. And Rogue uh, was called Rogue because they were rogues. They were outlaws. They didn't follow IFRA rules, right? Now they're IFRA compliant. Apparently their scents have changed is the rumor. Now I haven't smelt the new stuff, but the new caps on the bottles that you'll see kind of look like... Um, Kind of look like the cap on this on this papillon, this clear see-through cap thing is what the new ones look like. The old ones look like the one I'm going to show you. And so if you can find one of these older bottles, that's what you want. Apparently, I don't know. I've never smelled the new stuff, but this is uh, Shepra Siam. And look at the look at the real oak moss. Look what it does to the juice. Beautiful, beautiful green juice. Oh. 
I love this stuff. Kiffer Lime, Basil, Jasmine Absolute, Ylang Ylang, Oak Moss Absolute, Sandalwood, Benzoin, Leather, Civet, and Spices. And uh, the fragrance that is next on the list here, and I'll, I'll show you in just a second, but the fragrance that's next on the list is um, the quintessential Shepra, okay? The one that kind of everyone thinks of when they think of the very first Shepra. And this smells very similar to, to that, okay? So this is kind of like a modern version of, um, of Cote's Shepra. And uh, that Kiffer Lime note is very unique. So number seven is Cote's Shepra, and I'm gonna do a review or a quick hit video on this. I don't have enough juice to do, you know, a full wearing, but I will um, wear it and talk about it, and it is amazing. Uh, there's no doubt about it. It is an amazing fragrance, and uh, thanks to Will for sending this to me. Cote Shepra is like the gold standard, you know, in Shepra's. Um, bergamot, sage, civet. Civet in the top, interestingly enough. Orris root, jasmine, rose with oak moss and labdanum. Man, I need a bottle of this, honestly. It's not right that I don't have a bottle. Uh, number six. Number six is going to be Arosia, and it is um, a fragrance that really grew on me, and it's a shapeshifter, and you have to be very careful talking about this, because if you just wear this once, and if you just wear this once and um, talk about it, wear number two could be completely different. Where number three could be completely different again. Where number four could be completely different a fourth time. So it's a tough one to pin down, but it's grown on me now that I'm kind of understanding it a little bit more. And it came out in 2013, and it's called Roja Houtlux. Or just Roja is what it's called, but people call it Houtlux because of the Connect collection. Um, but Houtlux is a fragrance that... Um, Roja sells for $3,500. It has gold flakes in it. Um, I don't, I don't really care for that, but I do care for the scent and the scent has really grown on me. It's very unique. It's like a resinous florally. Uh, there's a huge Ylang Ylang note in here. Maybe this could be maybe one of the best Ylang Ylang fragrances. Okay. Uh, the Ylang Ylang note in this is stunning, but it dries down to this resinous labdanum, irisy labdanum like like smell, okay? And it is very unique. It's very posh, very high class. When you wear this, you do really feel like you are, you know, wearing something amazing and special with high quality ingredients. Uh, it has real ambergris in it, uh, and it has benzoin and styrax, amiris again. It's one of Roja's secret weapons he uses over and over again. Uh, oak moss, ginger, clove, cinnamon. It does have this heavy cinnamon feel on the base sometimes. Sometimes the cinnamon comes out more. Sometimes the florals come out more. Sometimes that irisy, um, you know, uh, resinous labdanum. I used to think this was one of the best labdanum scents. I used to think it was like a labdanum bomb. And sometimes when I wear it, it is. The problem is, is sometimes when I wear it, it's not. And so it's, um, I don't know if it's the temperature, the weather, or what, but my skin chemistry, I don't know what it is, but uh, I'll tell you what, don't hold these by the cap, though. That is not going to pick up the bottle. But, um, you know, it, it, is it worth $3,500? Hell no. Is it worth a grand? Probably not. Uh, but if you're a lover of fragrances and you can find this for a grand or less, 100 mils, not bad. I mean, you'll get a lot of enjoyment and wear out of this. And it is thick. It's an extra. Uh, it's going to last all day. Um, but yeah, I mean, I did a full review on it. You can go check it out. All right. So that is Roja at number six. Number five. Number five is... A fragrance that 
you can go watch my early impression on on my channel. I did an early impression on this and you can watch my complete shock and amazement at how beautiful this is. This is the great Tietro Alascala, one of the best animalic sheepers of all time. This is the EDT and Splash. I have both EDT and EDP. I actually have a video up comparing the EDT and EDP and they're both amazing. My God. Oh man, the animalics in this are so perfect and there's this honeyed aspect to it. Uh, and for it to beat Roja, the Roja fragrance, I mean, that really says something of how high quality and class this is. Uh, it does open up slightly aldehydic, slightly fruity, lots of beeswax, lots of uh, beautiful florals with that beeswax, resinous beeswax, uh, and animalic civet in the base with benzoin, oak moss, musk, Patchouli, vetiver, frankincense. I love this stuff. I'm a I'm a I'm a huge lover of Tietro alla Scala. Um, any weather, any temperature, any time, I could wear that. That could be a signature scent for me. It's so good. Speaking of signature scents, um, these these next four top four are out of this world. So uh, number four, we've got Rochas Femme in any iteration. This is the vintage Parfum de Toilette. You can see right there, Parfum de Toilette. Uh, and I also have a vintage uh, X-Ray, seven and a half mil X-Ray, which they're both good, okay? Uh, I personally prefer the um, Parfum de Toilette, believe it or not, because the X-Ray is, um, well, the extra is very, very spicy in the opening, almost too spicy. You know, they went a little bit heavy with that ginger. I'm sorry, with the cumin. And um, it kind of kind of put me off, but this is the um, pure parfum. And while it is good, And I do really like it. Uh, I just, I like this just as much, if not more, you know, and, and I've got 100 mils instead of seven or now five or whatever it is. Some of it evaporated. I use some trying to get to know it. And it is very good. But Rocha's Femme is one of the greatest uh, Sheepras of all time. There's no doubt about it. It's a Sheepra Oriental mixture, if you will. And um, it was created by the great Edmund Runitska, again. Uh, and uh, there is a lovely note of, um, plum in here, lovely note of, of plum, and it is, uh, it's almost, it's, it's like you're, it's like you're smelling this, um, it's like you're smelling this, uh, deep, dark, decadent, flowing plum, almost like, uh, almost like you're smelling plum syrup, okay? Plum syrup with rosewood. The clove uh, is is spicy, but there's cumin in the top that isn't listed, is the thing. I'm, I'm certain of it. There's cumin in the top that is not listed. Uh, and you get this beautiful irisy uh, oriental. It is very syrupy, but it's also very floral and very animalic. There's oak moss and leather and, and civet and benzoin in the base, patchouli and all, all that good stuff. It's one of the greatest fragrances ever created, honestly. Um, and you should smell this if you're a fragrance lover. Again, forget the fact that it says femme. Just, you know, get your nose on it. Even the new stuff I hear is quite, quite good. Okay, number three is uh, going to be Sheepropolitan. I wish I had a full bottle of this stuff, but you know what? This is holding me over. I wore it to bed the other night, and my God, what a journey. I mean, um, that mixture between the galbanum and the labdanum and that orangey clementine mixed with the lavender, and then you get the plum. The flowers feel like they're straight from your garden, like they're fresh, you know, like you're smelling this fresh flower. Uh, Fresh florals, the gardenia, the iris, the jasmine, the hyacinth. It all smells so fresh and so vibrant. And um, the, the base of that resinous benzoin with castorium and immortelle, everlasting flower absolute, actually. 
Tolu Balsam, Styrax, Vanilla, Leather. There's a little bit of leather, not enough to go on the leather perfume side of things. And I mean, what a fragrance this is. This is uh, one of the best Sheepers ever created. It was created 10 years ago by uh, Bertrand Duchafour. So Sheeper Palatan comes in at number three. Number two is, you guys guess what number two is? Uh, it is probably the best Sheeper of all time. It probably deserves to be number one, but I had to put it at number two because there's one Sheeper I enjoy wearing even more than this, but this is the great Mitsuko. Okay, now this is a 20, I think this is a 2014 batch, I'm not sure, 4T01, but it's amazing, either way. Um, this is the Eau de Parfum, uh, this is the Eau de Toilette, I have the Eau de Cologne, anything you can get, any version of Mitsuko is a killer. Uh, bergamot, jasmine, rose, citrus, lilac, peachy, lang, ambergris, oak moss, spices, vetiver, and cinnamon, and it just has this classic Guerlain sophistication that cannot be matched. No matter, I mean, you can't match this. Um, the only thing I would like is I'd like there to be more animalics. Maybe in the X-ray version there is, but that's the reason it lost the top spot. This is probably the best Sheepra, probably the best creation as far as technical prowess goes that I have in my collection. You know, as a perfume collector, this is a must. Uh, this is a must uh, spicy Sheepra to understand and wear. The execution of the peach is, I mean, what can you say? Um, what can you say about Mitsuko? I'll try to review it one day and probably fail mightily, but number one, Shepra for me, and again, this is my taste, what I prefer to wear, and I really need another bottle of this, but I'm worried it's not going to be as good, so I'm not going to buy it. Plus, I don't want to give Roja $1,000, is Diagalev. So Diagalev is Roja's take on a big, as he says, Baroque Shepra. So it's taking the Mitsuko DNA, it's taking the Roja's Femme DNA, it's, it's taking a little bit of Azure with that leatheriness in the base, and it's taking a little bit of, um, I would say even Bandi, which was on my Shepra list from yesterday. And it's adding a big hunk of cumin and tarragon in the top, which I love. And you just get, you just get this sexual, there's this sexual tension in this perfume as well. Uh, but whereas the sexual tension with Salome kind of comes from the Hyrax and it smells more like Bala Versailles, this almost smells more like a classical Shepra. It really does feel like you're taking a Mitsuko and creating this uh, animalic sexual Shepra out of it. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know how I could describe this. This is going to be a nightmare to review for me because it is so complex. It changes. You do get the uh, citruses in the top. Beautiful. It opens up very bright and then it goes very dark very quick is what's interesting about this. So when you first spray, it opens up extremely bright, uh, but it doesn't last long to being bright. It goes very quickly into the thicker, resinous, cumin, sweaty florals with peach and ambrette and clove and cumin and leather. And this is the one that probably could have been on the leather video, probably because of the leathery base, but... Um, you know, and all the resins and all that stuff, but there's so much going on. It, it deserves to be at the top here. So this is where I put it. Um, you know, we've been at this an hour and 33 minutes. I can't even see straight anymore, but I will tell you that Diagalev, if you know me, you know it's my favorite Shepra to wear, but I think Mitsuko is probably the greatest Shepra ever created, um, just based on technical construction. But I just love the sexual, animalic, challenging... This is a challenging wear for most. For me, my, with my penchant and tolerance for animalics, this is just perfect. It's just, it's, you know, if you said I could wear one Sheepra for the rest of my life, this would be it. Uh, Diaghilev is a pure love for me. And that's why when I am so hard on Roja and yet I like some of his stuff, that's why I, there's this back and forth. 
there's this dichotomy I have between, you know, some of the brand and the techniques that are done and his love of vintage fragrances and, and what he is creating, because this really is extraordinary. It is, um, it's so deep. It's so challenging. It's so, uh, you'll, you, there's nothing like this I've ever smelled. Even smelling it from the atomizer, you know, I get this high just smelling it from the atomizer. It is, uh, it is, um, there's, there's just nothing like it. There's just absolutely nothing like it. And Diagolev is, uh, it's a stunner. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a pure stunner and I, and I need another bottle. Uh, I need another bottle at some point soon, but, uh, I'm going to get this down to the very last drop and, uh, that's my video. So that's my Sheepra part two, the green, the floral, the fruity Sheepras ranked. What a list this has been. What an absolute uh, beating it's been to rank these. And I hope you um, appreciate this. It's a fun way to talk about a lot of fragrances, but I'd love to hear your rank Sheepra list. By the way, uh, Lee from Fragnanimous was very kind and he sent me the brand new Bortnikoffs, okay? So one day soon, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow, uh, I'm going to do a, um, I'm going to do a live stream and we're going to blind, we're going to, well, not blind, but we're going to uh, test these for the first time, these brand new Bortnikoff scents. So, uh, yes, that'll be, that'll be fun. I think that'll be a fun way to, to test these out and get everyone's thoughts. So appreciate everyone watching. Appreciate the uh, feedback and support. Let me know what your favorite sheepers are. Let me know which ones from the list you love or would like to try. Thank you very much, everybody. Cheers, guys, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye now.